Welcome to the Remarkable Relationship Show with Mercy Russell, where we find the wonder in your story. I will be your host for the next hour. I have over 35 years of experience applying the science of relationship systems to my practice of psychotherapy and leadership consulting. My intuitive skills allow me to bring clarity and vision to your challenges. I hope you will be surprised in the next hour. Good morning. This is Mercy Russell with the Remarkable Relationship Show. My goal is to bring a fresh perspective to you on all things related to how humans develop their individual brilliance while navigating the excitement, stickiness, and resistance in their relationships. In my 40 years of working as a psychotherapist and consultant, I have been continually amazed at the ways in which people overcome challenges. I hope to share my experience, insights, and to stimulate your thinking today. So today I'm here with Peggy Chan. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Peggy. Hi. Uh, the topic of our show today is the impact of a popular music group on the lives of their fans and the society. So first, let me introduce Peggy. Peggy uh, is a colleague of mine in the network of Bowen Family Systems Theory um, uh, aficionados, you might say. Um, Peggy is a social, Peggy lives in Hong Kong. She's a social worker um, and she does family therapy uh, with, with a non-governmental organization in Hong Kong. She also runs a, the training program in Bowen Theory in Hong Kong and is really a point person for Bowen Theory in the Pacific theater, I would say. Um, I met Peggy at the Bowen Center for the Study of the Family in Washington, DC, uh, probably at least 15 years ago. And I think we've been, we were both attending conferences and training programs before that. Um, <clears throat> and so and we're part of an, a national and international network of people interested in teaching Bo and interested in working with and teaching Bowen theory. And um, in what year, 2018, Peggy hosted the first international conference, or the second international conference for, the, for Bowen Theory in Hong Kong, um, which was quite a spectacular event, I have to say. And so it was there that um, I got to learn a little bit about Hong Kong and to get to know Peggy and some of her students. We were so graciously hosted there. Um, so Peggy, is there anything else you'd like to share about your, um, your background or your uh, interest in Bowen theory? Uh, yes, yeah, thank you for inviting me, Mercy. Yeah, uh, I'm very delighted to have this opportunity to share Bowen theory and my uh, thoughts about uh, this phenomenon. Um, yeah, I, I think that I also um, get a lot of insight from studying Bowen theory, and it has been my area of study for more than 30 years. Mm -hmm. So I think of it, as I've shared on the show before, um, uh, those of us who get, you know, spend so much time learning and training Bowen theory and continuing to apply it, um, really uh, sort of dive deeply with it. It's we're part of, I think, who we are as humans, uh, as individuals, but also it's just, um, it's a very comprehensive way of looking at human behavior. <clears throat> And, yeah, and I think with this um, uh, theory, it helps me to understand um, family and social phenomena in a much deeper way. Yes. Yes. And today we're going to talk about that. Yes. So <laughs> when Peggy graciously agreed to come to the, on the show with me and to do an interview, um, I asked her what she'd be interested in talking about. And that she then described to me um, a, a very interesting social phenomenon in Hong Kong right now, I believe mostly in, and it's in Hong Kong, but also is, you know, I, I think cultural uh, 
um, events in Hong Kong also spread into other parts of Asia in, in, the, in that Pacific theater. So you can describe that. I'll describe briefly what it is, but it's about a popular music group, which is called Mirror. And um, it, I, I'm gonna let Peggy describe it to you because she's the one who brought it to my attention. And from talking about it, there were several questions that, several angles that she and I got very interested in looking at. So Peggy, can you tell us what this phenomenon around this very popular music group is in Hong Kong today? Yes, thank you. Um, yeah, uh, since 2018, this group has been gripping the heart of many people, young and old in Hong Kong. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, this group, uh, The Mirror, is a group of 12 young people, uh, all males. So um, uh, these are very talented uh, male singers who also dance uh, very well. So uh, these 12 people, uh, 12 persons, were selected from a, from a TV show uh, about, um, is that like a talent show? Uh, which is called King Makeup. So um, uh, they have, uh, I think, about uh, 90 people being selected. But out of these 90 people, these 12 people, of course, are, the, are those uh, queen. And um, so the TV station uh, formed them into a group, a band of 12, uh, 12 uh, uh, people and uh, named them Mira. And, and since then, uh, this band has been very popular and is really the heart of uh, many, many people in Hong Kong. And uh, the name has a very special meaning. Um, according to them, they say that uh, mirror, the name of the mirror, uh, comes from this idea that when they look at the mirror every day, they will see their real selves. And if they have uh, a number of mirrors, then they can have many aspects they will have infinite uh, images. And so with uh, many uh, of them in the group, so they will have uh, uh, kind of unlimited potentials. So very meaningful name. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I think these um, 12 persons are basically very talented, are very uh, are pleasant. So they they really stir up a lot of, um, of affection and um, and uh, admiration from uh, a lot of young people in Hong Kong, and um, and and they, I think their their attraction really cross borders, cross all kinds of boundaries in Hong Kong. So um, of course, basically, uh, they are really admired or appreciated by the female population, but also a lot of young young guys, young males also mm -hmm. really uh, 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 admire them. Uh, so their their fans are all uh, come from all all sectors of the population. Like uh, they can be very young young children to sixties uh, or eight or seventies uh, uh, women. So really, all sectors of the population are involved, and we so we we see that um, uh, many, especially many young wives, many young girlfriends are also very involved and many parents will bring their kids to watch their show. And um, so it's a very, very um, popular community event. And uh, so the, the admiration and the, um, and the feeling of affection for this group is very, very strong in the community. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it has a strong impact on family relationship, on uh, friendships, and on also on the um, uh, also ha has impact on the community in terms that it is making a community very uh, uh, exciting uh, has lots of events to to really look forward to. So um, Peggy, can you just uh, describe a little bit more in detail how um, there were several things you you told me just to sort of illustrate the depth of the enthusiasm of the fans, you might say. Um, and one involved the phenomenon around the marketing 
yes. and the use of advertising with this band. Yes. Yes. And then the other thing um, I'd like you to talk about is the what the fans did to celebrate the birthday of yes. one of the members. Yes, yeah, yeah, uh, right. Um, uh, I have to confess I'm not a fan, but so I, I will not be as detailed as uh, <laughs> to, to know all, all, all those uh, uh, things that they have done. But um, yeah, the, the fans really show their love to, to uh, these 12 persons uh, very much. So uh, when one of them has the birthday, uh, uh, I think one time they, so the leading singer is uh, Mr. Gong To. So on his birthday, uh, they uh, they treat the whole of Hong Kong to trams, to have wow. free ride on trams. So um, it's, yeah, so free public transportation. Yeah, the fans trams. paid for everyone to have free public transportation on, on yeah. the trams that day. Yeah. And uh, also, they put up a huge signboard in one of the busiest uh, mm -hmm. shopping mall in Hong Kong. And uh, in that district, which we call Causeway Bay, uh, they will have um, human-sized um, paper statues of their idol. Mm -hmm. And people will flock to those paper statues to take pictures with them. Um, yeah, so um, many affectionate um, a gestures to show their affection for for the idol. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you also talked about um, how the because of their popularity, they have become spokesmen for many different types of products, and yes. that their fans um, are really avidly pursue. Yes. you know, purchasing these items that the band has. Um, you might say, um, advertised. Yeah, uh, they have a huge impact on the commercial uh, uh, sector. Uh, so they were very busy doing all kinds of promotion and uh, uh, they were so involved in all kinds of advertisement. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I think it's, uh, at one time, they were about uh, 60 to 70 percent of all the products in Hong Kong were were, were uh, advertised by them. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And this includes yeah. also thing we're talking about like washing machines, right? Yes, washing yeah. machines, even cosmetics uh -huh. for, for women. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even cosmetics for women. <laughs> and uh -huh. um, and so the, the husband of, of the fans sometimes joked that, hey, um, uh, please ask the mirror guys to uh, promote uh, not so expensive uh, uh, products. <laughs> <laughs> because like uh, one, one woman, she's, uh, she's taking her husband to, to shop, to shop a uh, 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 washing machine. And she said that she won't shop any other brand of uh, uh, washing machine. She'll only shop for those brands that uh, was advertised by the mirror group. <laughs> mirror group. <laughs> and sometimes, uh -huh. yeah. Uh, I think in quite a lot, a lot of household too, they will have huge poster or huge tower mm -hmm. with the with the uh, images uh, in the home. So sometimes right. the home was decorated with uh, a lot of things about you know, a mirror. Uh huh. And this, so this um, enthusiasm, as you say, could be women. You know, it's primary can be men, but also can women be, yeah. of different of all ages, and single and married and yes um and i think one thing that i thought was kind of cute was that there is a facebook page for the husbands of women yes. who are fans <laughs> yeah so like a support think, group for the husbands yes. <laughs> it, it, it's very funny so i think the the movement to us uh, uh uh the movement of the fans are creating quite a stir in families and uh, we found that there are groups of men <laughs> who, who, who sometimes they feel that they are the victims of this uh, fan movement mm -hmm. because they found that their wives or their girlfriends are so involved emotionally with uh, the mirror group. Uh, to some extent, they may feel kind of sidelined or, or uh, uh, disregarded. Mm -hmm. uh, but most of the men are uh, uh, acting very graciously. Mm -hmm. they, some of them prided themselves on being graceful or gracious 
to to right. support their their wife's um, uh, 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 gestures. And so um, uh, this, so someday they come they pop up this uh, Facebook account uh, which call itself um, with the, uh, the the name of the account the name of the Facebook account is like this. Um, my wife married Mira, uh, leading to my marriage in in uh, in ruin. In ruin. <laughs> in ruin. <laughs> yeah, in ruin. And um, it's interesting that um, uh, these couples, the woman will call them, call their present husband, ex ex husband, and will call one of the the mirror group whom they may have a more or affection for as the husband, as a present husband. Mm -hmm. And so this Facebook page, uh, the, 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 the guy who started this uh, page, Facebook page will also call himself uh, uh, ex-husband. <laughs> and uh, very soon after the Facebook, uh, this account got uh, uh, established, uh, he has a lot of followers. And um, then it's, uh, he felt he, he he felt warm and feeling that he's not the only one. And he found that actually there are so many uh, men, so many husbands also being in the same state, also mm -hmm. feeling that they're their ex-husband. So right. in a way, right. it's jokingly called ex-husband, but they're ex their present husband. Right, right. And I think you said that he put up the Facebook page, but had no idea how popular it would be. Right. Right. So this was an interesting phenomenon. And you and I have had some conversations about just, you know, thinking about, you know, how a relationship like this can function in a marriage. And it actually can, you know, it can, it can be very um, stabilizing and it'll vary yes. depending on the marriage. Now, yeah. um, can you, would you mind sharing your husband's comment about this? Oh, <laughs> and just to mention that your husband, you have a, a husband and two sons and two yes. daughter-in-laws, none of whom are fans no. or, or know much of anything about this phenomenon, right? They're pretty yeah. involved in their own professional right, right. activities. Yeah, right? I think that, but, uh, but, you, but you, you, I, I thought it was really, um, I thought he was a good example of, you know, um, a husband's response to just right, right, that. yeah. But, but let me ex uh, uh, compare my my experience with the mirror group. Uh -huh. uh, uh, my husband's too. Both of uh, both of us are not too involved. But uh, I think I'm relatively more in touch with the mirror group. Yeah, so I I learn a bit more about what they are uh, experiencing. And my husband is quite of he, he just saw it from a from afar. Yes. So one day I was commenting on uh, my my uh, feeling or my thoughts about this group, uh, especially about the Facebook account. And I was thinking, I was commenting, hey, um, this husband, these husbands seem to be in a uh, 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 um, pretty pretty difficult state. And I feel that uh, maybe uh, they, uh, uh, yeah, they should be uh, s something like, um, uh, I'm wondering if whether they feel uh, uh, neglected or not treated well by being called an ex-husband. Mm. And my husband said, oh, don't take it so seriously. They are just uh, uh, doing it in a playful way. It's just a playful way. Uh -huh. Yeah. And I think that's, you know, um, you know, I'm sure that there are some examples of different reactions, but I, you know, in general, it has seems to have that tone to it, you know, yes. that they're really, it just is sort of a lighthearted in a way, yes. a light, even though people are taking it somewhat seriously, in their lives, it's somewhat a lighthearted phenomenon, but it's taking up a lot of attention. So it's time for us to take a break. And um, when we come back, um, I wanted there's there was an there was an incident involving yes. this group since you and I started talking about yes. it, which has really um, impacted how we what we wanted to focus on today. And this is Mercy Russell with a Remarkable Relationship Show. I'm here today with. Peggy Chan from Hong Kong, and we're talking about the impact of a popular music group on the lives of their fans and the society. And we'll be back in just a few minutes. <laughs>
welcome back. This is Mercy Rush talking about the impact of a popular music group on the lives you have of something fans. important to say? Want to help improve our world? Need to promote your business uniquely and effectively? KKNW is the answer. Our staff helps broadcasters and podcasters create professional sounding audio. Bring your talent and let our experts help you craft a radio show or podcast that best delivers your message. Learn more at 1150kknw.com. That's 1150kknw.com. KKNW, talk variety that's live and local. Hi, tune into my new show, The Remarkable Relationship Show with me, Mercy Russell. I bring a fresh perspective on all things related to how humans develop their individual brilliance while navigating the excitement, stickiness, and resistance in their relationships. Wednesdays from 9 to 10 a.m. And you can visit my website at leadershipwithmercy.com. Don't let that herd mentality lead you off a cliff. We support Thinking for Yourself on Alternative Talk 1150. Hello, welcome back. This is Mercy Russell with the Remarkable Relationship Show. I'm here today with Peggy Chan um, from Hong Kong. And we're talking about the impact of a popular music group on the lives of their fans and the society. And Peggy has just been filling us in on what she, what we've called the mirror phenomenon. The mirror, mirror is the name of a popular musical group in Hong Kong of 12 musicians. And so Peggy was just sharing us some of the details of the, how popular they are with the fans. Um, so, uh, um, and this has really sort of taken over uh, a lot of interest. I think you said that there was something like 60 to 70% of marketing and promotion yes. was done by this group. So yes. that's a really big impact on society. Um, and I do just want to mention that there's, you know, sort of a rapid social change going on mm -hmm. in Hong Kong. And it isn't, it's interesting that this phenomenon has come up at the same time. This group yeah. started becoming popular in 2018. And um, at any rate, so the, the political and social changes um, are going on at the same time. And that's um, not related to our topic today, but it's just, it's a good, it's, I think it's an interesting background. So Peggy, now something happened in the last yes. month with this band that has had a, an impact. Um, and I can can you describe for us what what transpired? Yes, uh, I think on um, about a week ago, August twenty fifth is a dark day for this group and actually for Hong Kong too. So, so July it was a bit July twenty fifth. Oh, sorry, yeah, July twenty yeah. eighth. Uh huh. July twenty eighth um, on a Thursday. Yeah. So um, this is the, mm. um, the fourth day of the first concert of this group in the largest um, uh, venue for concert in Hong Kong. So it happened in the uh, Hong Kong Coliseum. So um, this Coliseum has a big, uh, 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 a big number of people, uh, about uh, 12,000 people uh, available there. Mm -hmm. um, this is a long awaited uh, event for this group and actually for Hong Kong too, because um, this is the first um, uh, concert that this group is able to hold in this big venue. Mm -hmm. So um, for whatever singer or performer who is able to have their show in this Coliseum is a status symbol. And um, so it has been a long awaited event and people are looking forward to it very much. The tickets are sold in a, uh, uh, at a very early stage and people are very excited about this event. But however, on this day, the 25th of August, um, a big accident happened in which um, uh, a singer, a dancer, a dancer is injured seriously. So um, during the performance, um, the, the uh, TV screen fell 
and it mm. fell on the back of a dancer. So the group was dancing, and this dancer, Mr. Lee, was very seriously uh, injured, and he was still in um, intensive unit right now. Um, so it has been uh, a tremendous um, uh, tragedy for for the uh, group and for many fans, and actually really for Hong Kong too. So um, people are very shocked, very uh, sad, uh, very worried, especially for the injured um, dancer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So um, I know that <clears throat> you and I have been talking about this phenomenon. And um, as we, you know, when this event happened, um, it rippled through the society in such a way that you were particularly, you know, just sensitive or aware of the, the impact uh, mm -hmm. of the event on the group, but also um, wanting to respect the um, the feelings and the the sense of uh, I guess you would say how deeply the fans felt the impact of this tragedy, yes. Yes. right? And um, you know, just the even the fact that something like that could happen in a yes. venue like that yes. is a cause for concern yes. because it also uh, implies something about the infrastructure. Right, yes, that, such a, that such an event could that such a large TV could have could fall over a popular event. Is the Coliseum a private? No, uh, it's a public. Uh, I yeah. think it's a government structure. Right, right. Yes. So, um, I just I what I what what you and I are interested in talking about today is how this has rippled through the society, and how this. Um, how this kind of event, how can it come about to have such an impact on so many people? Mm -hmm. And um, and then how does that happen? Now we're talking about this in the in the context of a of a a band with you might say even idol worship, mm -hmm. but this phenomenon is not limited to this type of cultural phenomenon. I think, as we can see in the United States today, that there are, we also have a certain amount of, of, of very popular public figures who um, attract a lot of um, attention and support and fervor from their admirers, right? And um, sometimes the opposite as well, although with a musical group, it's not so much the phenomenon that you have, you know, what you might call what we call haters here, mm -hmm. but it's still a phenomenon that someone's personality or way of being captures so many people and almost yes. spreads like wildfire. Yes. Um, so I think I, I just thought I would talk a little bit about you know, how does this happen? And, and just sort of the very basics of just who we are as social beings, right? That we right. are, um, you know, biologists study different um, life forms. I mean, we'll just talk sort of in the animal kingdom right now. And they just, they describe them in terms of sociality, how social are they? Meaning, how sensitive mm. to the others in the group are they? And how much does the behavior of other members in the group influence their, their behavior and their physiology and mm. their reproduction? And so they have, there's a continuum, like for example, lizards are not very high in sociality. They don't hang out together. They don't hang around the, you know, the, the the mother doesn't hang around the eggs right or nurture the eggs right so they're pretty they grow up they're pretty they're very individualistic right they don't they don't clump together they might swim in the same place or hang out near each other but they aren't 
particularly sensitive to each other. Uh, you know, at the other end, and then, so that's, you might say almost, you know, sort of in the middle, but it's an example that we know. But at the very high end of the scale, we call that mm. U, U, that means EU, sociality, highly social. Mm -hmm. And uh, highly social species um, include humans, um, uh, a sort of a type of prairie mammal called meerkats, mm -hmm. um, bees and ants and social wasps are highly social. Mm -hmm. That what that means is that they're extremely they move in a group they they almost operate as one organism they're very sensitive to each other mm -hmm. um two individuals sitting next to each other when the physiology of one changes the other will change too maybe this in re the resonance but maybe mm -hmm. in the opposite um and so we've talked of course over the decades <laughs> many examples of this because of our interest in the the how could the connectedness of humans in the yes. in the human family um so others primates are also social but not but not as social as humans and not as i mean humans are higher on the scale of sociality than chimpanzees or bonobos um interestingly enough the two most successful species on the planet meaning the the ones who have the most uh, members, numbers of, of individuals, um, the highest biomass on the planet, and who live in, in the widest number of ecosystems are humans and ants. Oh. And humans are at the top of the vertebrate um, mm. scale. Uh, humans live on every continent in every climate. Ants, <laughs> this is what got me fascinated about ants. Ants are at the top of the vertebrate, of the invertebrate scale, mm -hmm. right? And many, and their biomass, they live on every continent. They've adapted to every continent. <laughs> and their biomass is the same as humans. Wow, and they're both high, highly social right mm -hmm. so we could go on about that but all to say we are deeply deeply connected to each other yes. and not just in our little family units yes. but in you know in um you know groups of greater and greater we're very influenced not only by people we know but by people we don't know mm. um so we have individual bodies but we're mm. very we're wired to be very sensitive to the bodies of others and we as we like to talk about in Bowen theory, we react in predictable patterns to each other. Um, our feelings and our instinctual emotions, what we in Bowen theory would call emotionality, but it's more mm. instinctual emotions, are the barometer for how sensitive we are to each other. Thinking patterns, which and also the use of language in humans are also subject to the tides of feelings and emotions. So we like to think we're being logical with language, but often it's just another expression of emotion. Mm. They're very contagious. Emotions are very contagious and they run through a social group yeah. like wildfire. And that's what you'll be talking more about. Um, and some individual humans vary in how susceptible they are to this phenomenon or this contagion. For example, it sounds like your husband's not very susceptible. You know, it's not. <laughs> you're curious, but he's, he's just, he doesn't, he's just, you know, sort of way out on his periphery, right? He's not swept up in this. So at the extreme, um, this kind of group can act as one unit and they imitate each other, they can move as a unit, sometimes they can become a violent mob, mm. right? Um, others are more immune to the influence and they'll be able to think and take ap action for themselves. And I think in that, you know, ex-husband's group, they probably have, you know, a range, that type of variety in there. And um, their reactions to events in society will be more measured and will have the influence 
know, of reducing anxiety in the group. Sometimes this group phenomenon can be ecstasy, can be very pleasurable. Mm. Sometimes it's mm. very anxious. So that's my general little um, kind of some of my thoughts about the degree of sociality right. that we're dealing with. Um, so you talked a little bit about how the tragedy has affected the fans and the society um, uh, in terms of how people are feeling. Have you seen any other types of behaviors that have changed in the group since um, this event? I think in, uh, on the whole, I see a lot of maturity in the fans. Mm -hmm. I think, um, of course, we are all uh, shocked, dumbfounded, uh, but I found that um, the fans really show their love to to the uh, to the idols, to this group. Mm -hmm. So uh, right after the accident, uh, I don't like in social media. What I saw most is a call for for uh, gathering energy, which is somewhat like prayer, call for prayer mm -hmm. for the injured uh, uh, dancer. So there's a lot of um, good wishes, a lot of uh, calling for this gathering energy and very little uh, negative uh, reactivity, very little like uh, blaming or that kind of thing, but a lot of concern uh, for, for, for the dancer as well as for the 12 young people. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, in a way I feel quite touched by their love for, for this group. Mm -hmm. And so uh, they, I think the fans really demonstrate um, uh, their love for this group in a very mature way. And also uh, they, they, they make it very clear that right now the focus is on helping on facilitating the injured uh, dancer and the group uh, back on track. Of course, we hope that the dancer can recover as soon as possible. And they're also concerned about the the uh, uh, the the twelve young people, where what what uh, so in a way, the career is like a suddenly uh, 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 interrupted at this point. Mm -hmm. So where they are heading towards, and um, so the group was silent for a few days, but then now the group um, uh, is beginning to show that they're sticking together. Um, this uh, a show of solidarity and people are really supporting them. Mm -hmm. So I see a lot of uh, kind-hearted support for this group mm -hmm. and um, uh, people really uh, wish them the best, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, uh, and so the band members were quiet for a couple of days yes. and then did they make another appearance? Did they send out any kind of statement? Have they, how have they communicated with their fans about this? I th yeah, I think um, uh, gradually uh, one of the, the um, I think their response is very um, uh, uh, careful. Uh, I think they know the impact, right? So I think they are very careful with their comment. Like um, uh, they saying that they are supporting each other. Um, yeah, nothing very pointing, but uh, mm -hmm. mainly saying that they're supporting each other, that they want the best for, for the injured uh, singer. Um, but, now, they cancel, but they canceled uh, oh. one of their uh, concert to Tokyo. Oh, I see. Yeah. So, they, so they, they were on a tour, but they canceled it. Yes, yeah. Uh -huh. So I think they are at a stage where they really, uh, really taking a short break to review the whole situation, to mm -hmm. see um, what, what, what next. Mm -hmm. Has there been any talk in, among the fans or in public about the responsibility or uh, blame for this? I'm gonna, we, um, we're gonna take another break, but I'm gonna leave that question with you and you know, come back to that. Yes. And then we can talk more about, you know, how the society, you know, how does the society react? And then yes. uh, what parameters would you look for to see a higher, a higher level of functioning yeah. versus one that is in a sense going more downhill. Yes. 
Yes. This is Mercy Russell with a Remarkable Relationship Show. I'm here today with Peggy Chan of Hong Kong, and we're talking about the impact of a popular music group on the lives of their fans and the society. Hello, this is Mercy Russell with a Remarkable Relationship Show. I'm here today with Peggy Chan, and we're talking about the impact of a popular music group and actually Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Norman of a popular today. music group I'm not an American on the lives of their fans. Infections like polio, society. smallpox, and measles it used to be as common as coronavirus is today. But now we have life-saving vaccines for those and other diseases. Sadly, too many children still go unvaccinated. Choosing to delay or refuse vaccine puts your child and other children at serious risk. So talk to your child's doctor today about vaccines. And for more information, visit aawellnessproject.org. Hi, tune in to my new show, The Remarkable Relationship Show, with me, Mercy Russell. I bring a fresh perspective on all things related to how humans develop their individual brilliance while navigating the excitement, stickiness, and resistance in their relationships. Wednesdays from 9 to 10 a.m., and you can visit my website at leadershipwithmercy.com. Multicultural, multidimensional even. Alternative Talk 1150. Hello, this is Mercy Russell with a Remarkable Relationship Show. I'm here today with Peggy Chan, and we're talking about the impact of a popular music group and actually a tragedy involving one of their shows on the lives of their fans and the society. And so we've been talking about the phenomenon of a group called Mirror in Hong Kong, which is a group of 12 young men um, who are very popular. <laughs> and um, and an accident in which a TV screen fell on, on a large TV screen fell over the stage in the Coliseum with tw that holds 12,000 fans and seriously injured a, one, a, a dancer who is still in critical condition. This happened about a week ago on July 28th. 25th. July 28th. Sorry, sorry, 28th. So. Yeah, Jolly 28. So we were talking, you know, Peggy was just talking about how the tragedy had affected the fans and their really quite um, compassionate response. Um, so I had just, I, you know, just wanted to ask you, Peggy, about if there were um, concerns expressed about how this happened and if the, by any chance the I mean, how would the government would, would the would the government have a role in this? Um, and and you know, we're really thinking about well, what would be the optimal response when you have this type of you know really popular, contagious, emotional um, sort of phenomenon, and something really threatening happens. Um, it can kind of shake people's confidence in um, in the group. You know what would be the optimal response to that? Um, and I just want to mention we had something similar happen here around the on well, we January 6, twenty twenty one, around our elections and um, the the reaction to that has been very, in fact, divisive. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm not to say that it hasn't been, parts of it haven't been good, but it's just caused more and more emotion. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, in this situation, it, it, it's not a political event, but it, um, I'm wondering if the outcome will be different. You know, if, there, if, there, if there are indications that the outcome is going to be different. Right. Um, I think an objective, um, unbiased investigation into where the problem is, is very important. Mm -hmm. I think it's, in a way, a healing um, gesture uh, for, for the people of Hong Kong. So we need to know accurately where the problem lies. So if the government or related parties can uh, do a very 
um, objective, serious, disciplined investigation into the whole uh, event, the whole situation. That would be, I think, um, a very important uh, thing. Um, and who would do this? Is something that the government would do? It would be a, it would be a, um, yeah, it would be a sort of a an official response. Uh, the government has uh, right now established an uh, interdepartmental uh, mm -hmm. team to investigate the whole situation, and it says that a report will be coming soon in a few weeks. Yeah, so I think if we are able to see. Uh, where the problems actually lies, and and if there are also um, practical um, steps to um, to prevent further problems to be mm -hmm. uh, uh, to occur, that would be uh, uh, at least a bit healing for the people mm -hmm. of Hong Kong, because in the past, um, holding a concert in the Coliseum has been a a, a big thing and a status for the. Uh, the former concern as well as for Hong Kong. So for 40 years, Hong Kong has been very successful in the entertainment business, uh, especially in holding concert in the Coliseum. So this thing has never been anything that we have imagined would happen. Wow. So this is such a unique event. And then was the Coliseum um, active during COVID? Uh, not really. So I think um, there are a host of many factors yeah. involved uh, why this problem happened. Some people will speculate because of COVID. So many people go out of it, many companies go out of business and uh, many people also emigrated. So there may not be enough uh, skilled workers mm -hmm. involved. So is there anyone in the group you would say, I mean, I mean, in the social group, not so much in the music group, but unless it is someone in the music group, but it would be somebody taking what would what some leadership in terms of the response to this event and the reaction of the fans. Um, I'm not too sure about this because I'm not so involved in with the mm -hmm. fan movement. Um, I think um, right now what we see most is um the group uh trying to convey that they are really um staying together and um trying to convey um calmness to the group yeah mm -hmm. so their behavior in a sense they would be the leaders in terms right. of the emotional tone that would be set around yes this. yeah yeah that's right. true yeah uh huh so by um, saying this is tragic, but we are okay. We're we're certainly going to you know stop and um, in many ways honor the and wait for the healing or the recovery yeah. of this particular individual. Um, but it in a sense we're going to hold together. Yes, yeah. The and solidarity that, is emphasized. Uh -huh. Yeah. So isn't that interesting? So then for the group, the fans who are very, let's say, so interconnected emotionally, that must be really critical to them. Yes. The yeah. kind to see what the emotional response is of the members of the group. Yes. I think of course um there's speculation about whether the group will split something like this. Yeah because um, all along, uh, this group has been so successful. As this concert is as if the, the peak of their, of their success, right? And suddenly, um, uh, this, they, their success got a bit uh, interrupted. So um, it's a very critical uh, moment for them, yeah. And I think, um, yeah, many of course will hope that they can still stick together and and continue as before. Mm -hmm. You mentioned when we were chatting about it, the word justice, that it's that something that seems critical for the fans mm. is to have um, to be provided, maybe through this governmental response, a sense of justice about what mm. happened. Mm. And I, I'm not 
how do you understand that? What justice would look like? Is that a uh, matter of finding who's responsible and holding them accountable? Is it, what, what would it be? Yes, really finding technically where the problem lies right. and also uh, having measures to prevent uh, future problems happen again and holding people, holding the concerned people accountable. Mm -hmm. So I think that people don't want any cover up, don't want right. any parties to be uh, diluted of their responsibility. And so they want to know what the results of the investigation yes. are and open yes. communication from the government. Yes. Yeah, and I think. I wonder that, what the relationship would be between the band and the investigators. Uh, oh, that's a very interesting question. Um, uh, we we saw from the media that uh, the band members of the band are asked to go uh, to the police station to have their um, uh, what we could to tell them to tell the police what their understanding of the of of the incident is. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I don't know uh, the relationship between the band and the investigators. Right. If the investigators would um, would they see the band as an, as the injured party or just that individual? I don't know. Maybe as individuals, right? The one individual who was who was harmed, right? Yeah. So it's just, that'll be interesting to see how they how this young group manages itself. Um, so far, there haven't been, have you seen any particular negative repercussions of the idol worship on the group? I mean, that's a lot. It's a very intense projection from, a you know, a big focus from a lot of people. And these aren't like in an ant colony, right? That all the activity of the ants is really oriented to the queen, but she's just sitting down in a nest you know, you know, putting out eggs. Right. There's no, um, they may not even be aware or thinking of her. They're just off acting in an automatic way, you know, yeah. to, pr to, to, pr to promote this reproduction, but the queen isn't controlling things, right? She right. just, it's, but it's a sort of a, but it's still a, this sort of an emotional response. So I'm thinking that the band is doing its best. They're getting all this adulation. They're getting a lot of attention and money. Um, and this has certainly changed their lives. Has there mm. been, how have they done with that so far? Uh, I think it's a sober moment for the band. And I think they, I think they are taking some time to really reflect. And um, I think in the past, they have been very, very busy uh, doing a lot of um, promotion for mm -hmm. products. So they have, I think, very hectic schedule. So this time, this break may be uh, a time for them to really reflect on mm. uh, how they should position themselves in future, and um, the whatever, yeah, how how they would would uh, uh, carry out them this ban in the future. And as for the fans, I think um, I heard that some some fans, of course, are very badly hit. And some are having some post-traumatic uh, 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 response because, um, uh, like the TV, the 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 images of the of the falling screen mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. very threatening to a lot of people. Oh. So even though you are not the fan, you may be badly hit by seeing that image. I see the image. And um, so um, there there are uh, um, messages. There there are. Uh, uh, I think there are uh, talks of people being um, having uh, post-traumatic uh, stress disorder after this incident, and there's a singer who uh, who have been um, who has the uh, uh, initiative to to um, uh, ask a few so, uh, clinical psychologists to help with um, with the uh, band to give counseling to them. And some agencies mm -hmm. are also establishing um, counseling services for whoever uh, badly hit by this incident. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so that even the um, other members of the society who might not be directly involved as a fan or in the fan group have come forward to recognize and support the impact on this, um, you might yeah. call it a subset of society. Yes. So yeah. Peggy, I'm going to ask you sort of a difficult question and we're all, but I'm only going to give you a couple minutes so you don't have to struggle too long with it. But if you were the Minister of Cultural Affairs, oh. Hong Kong, this is a new position. <laughs> a really difficult question. Yes, right. And you, what, what, I think you've highlighted some of the things you see that are positive in terms of responses. But do you have any other thoughts about what you would do or what you would see as critical to just to stabilize um, the, the impact of this type of event? On, it, this is an ongoing living social phenomenon, right? It's not like everybody died in a plane crash and the band is gone. No, it's still there and it will continue to be a living organism. You know, in the larger society, <clears throat> um, I think um, conveying a caring and compassionate attitude is very important mm -hmm. uh, for the injured person, for the band. So, um, yeah, I think um, uh, the government has, I think, uh, earned some positive response by the facilitation of the parents of Mr. Lee uh, from Toronto to Hong Kong. And so um, showing compassion, uh, caring for the injured party or affected party is very important. Mm 